Welcome back to session five. This week we have the privilege of being able to look at the essential of friends. We have found at Saddleback Church that we are so much better together. We have coined a phrase with the Daniel Plan groups that everybody needs a buddy, whether it's in the area of food, fitness, um, growing in our faith, that we do it so much better as we collect and come together. We have the privilege of hearing from Pastor Rick this session where he'll talk about the biblical inspiration for making lasting change and building a sustainable and deep and rich community. And then I have the privilege of interviewing Pastor Steve Willis. He's a pastor from West Virginia that has not only had an amazing impact in his own personal health, but also his family's health within his church. And then his church has been a catalyst throughout their whole community. It's our hope and prayer that as a result of hearing Pastor Rick and Pastor Steve, that you will be inspired to grow in your own friendships and community as you move forward. Thank you so much. We look forward to you being with us. The Daniel Plan is a really big change, and it's a very good change, but it is a really big change. And a lot of people fell off kind of right away. Maybe people did it for three or four weeks. It wasn't something that they wanted to stick with. So pretty soon after, I found myself on a pretty lonely path. Michelle and I met in college, actually. Um, we just transferred into university, and we both um, realized that um, this was something we wanted to pursue, living a healthier lifestyle. When I did Daniel Plan, I did it with a group, uh, my men's group on Saturday morning. It ended up being a huge thing for our friendship. Well, I enjoy it just because of all the friends that I've been able to bring to it, and um, just to be able to hang out with them and work out at the same time. I'm killing two birds with one stone. I mean, it's awesome. It's a lot easier to exercise with other people and to be in a group of, of people who don't judge you if you do the exercises incorrectly. Most times I'm going to the left while everyone else is going to the right, and that's okay. What worked best for me with the Daniel Plan was doing it in a community with my friends and my small group. That gave me a great amount of accountability and it offered me the opportunity to give accountability to others. We just started talking and sharing life together and um, we decided to motivate each other and um, we started running around the track together. We uh, embraced new eating habits. We cleaned out each other's pantries and had a lot of laughs at what was in there. God did give me a body. I'm not getting younger and if I don't start taking care of myself, um, well, two things. Number one, I'm gonna lose my health because I'm not getting younger. And number two, it isn't honoring to God. I need to be a good steward of what he gave me. The power of the group, just talking about it, gives me chills because it makes a huge difference. Um, every person in that group changed, including some who came in not even originally wanting to change. And just because we were so connected with each other, we loved each other, we encouraged each other, it was a good, safe environment to make those changes. And even when there's times when people didn't make the change, um, encourage them to get back on track. And it worked really well as a whole group together. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Daniel Plan. Now, in this session, we're going to explore the Daniel Plan essential of friends, friendships, and how important they are to your health. This session is all about how we get healthy in community. God designed us to thrive in relationships. We are better together. The Bible says you need two things to follow through with a big challenge like getting healthy. You need God's power and you need a partner. Any change you make won't stick unless you have those two things in your life, God's power and a partner. That's why you need a small group to help you through the Daniel Plan. It is one of the five essentials. You're not going to get healthy on your own. You need the help of other people. Now, the Bible says it like this in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. Now, as a member of God's family, we're to support each other and build each other up. Romans 14, 19 says, always be seeking ways in which to, which lead to peace and ways in which we can support one another. You know, the word support in this verse literally means to increase each other's potential. I've been in my small group 11 years, and it has been a lifesaver in my life personally, even in this last year when I lost a son. You know, the Bible says that God wired the universe in such a way that we need each other. We get stronger, we get healthier, we get well in community. One day Jesus was walking down the street and a guy comes up to him and says, Lord, what's, what's life all about? And Jesus says this, 
Life is all about love. It's not about accomplishment. It's not about acquisition. It's not about popularity or power or prestige. Life is about love. It's all about relationships. In fact, Jesus said, you can summarize the purpose of life in two sentences. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's called the great commandment. You make a connection with God and you make a connection with others. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, let love be your highest goal. So that ought to be your number one goal in the Daniel plan. I wanna to learn to love. If I want lasting change, if I want permanent change in my life, I must fill my life with love. Why? Because love can change the unchangeable. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. Why? Because God is love. It doesn't say God has love, it says God is love. So when you're most like God is when you are loving. Love invigorates, love revitalizes, love renews, love refreshes, love heals. What do you need healed in your life? Love strengthens. What do you need strengthens, strengthened in your life? Love gives you energy. Where do you need more energy? Love empowers you when you don't have the power. The Bible says in Song of Solomon, love is stronger than death. Now think about that. And love is stronger than disease or doubt or anything else. So if you want to be consistent in getting healthy, you got to fill your life with love because it's the strongest power in the universe. Now the Bible is very frank about love. It says this, don't just pretend that you love others, really love them. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other, Romans 12. 9 and 10. You know, I love that. It says, take delight in honoring each other. You know what that means? It means that when people in your small group have a small win in health or in finances or in any area or goal, they said, you need to party. You need to celebrate with them. You need to enjoy their victory. Celebrate their small wins. The first way you can show love and honor to people in your small group and anybody else is to listen to them. We are to listen to each other. The Bible says we must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, James 1, 19. Now, by the way, if you get the first two right, then you're gonna, if you're quick to listen and slow to speak, then you're automatically gonna become slow to anger. If you have a problem with anger, it's because you're quick to, you're, you're quick to, to speak and, and slow to listen. You know, I can tell you this, that after being a pastor for nearly 40 years, that nothing shows honor more to somebody than listening to their story. People are dying for attention. They're starving for attention. The second way you can support and honor other people in your small group or anybody else is to learn from each other. Don't just listen to them, but learn from them. If you're truly listening, you're going to learn something. And we can all learn something from each other because everybody's ignorant just in different subjects. So you need to ask, what do I need to learn in the next year that will help me get healthy? and help me serve God more effectively. And then you need to ask, and who do I know that I can learn that from? Who is having success in areas that I want to have success in? Who can teach me what they know? We show love by listening to people, and we show love by learning from people. The third way you can show love is by leveling with other people. You need to be able to level with others. Now the Bible says, better is open rebuke than hidden love. And wounds from a friend can be trusted. But the enemy, an enemy multiplies kisses. That's Proverbs 27, five and six. What does that mean? Well, it means when somebody truly loves you, they won't be afraid to tell you what you need to hear. Here's what the Bible says in Ephesians 4:15: We speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ. Notice it says we speak the truth in love, not in anger, not in pride, uh, not out of irritation, not in self-righteousness, not because I'm frustrated, not in judgment, but we speak the truth in love. Love is our motivation. So when you level with others in love, you're actually helping each other grow, growing to be more like Christ. So if we're gonna show real love, and we're gonna honor and support each other. 
We've got to listen to each other. We've got to learn from each other. We've got to level with each other. And there's one other way to show love. We must liberate each other. The Bible says it like this. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Ephesians 4, 32. I do to others what God has done for me. In other words, I don't go all legalistic on people. My job is not to make people feel bad if they're not uh, staying with the program. It's not my job to play the Holy Spirit. It's not my job to condemn or correct. My job is to simply speak the truth in love and then to love them unconditionally. My job is to reach out to people when they fall and help them get back up on their feet because I'm gonna need them when I fall. You see, your job is to say, hey, I know you're going through a tough time, but I believe in you and I know you can do this and I can help you do this and I hang in there with you. And believe me, there's nothing more liberating than to know that somebody believes in you. Now these four things, listening to each other, learning from each other, leveling with each other, and liberating each other, these are the keys to building strong, healthy relationships that are gonna give you a strong, healthy life. You cannot ignore the friendship factor in the Daniel plan. Let me pray with you. Would you bow your heads? God, our desire is that we will become people who are healthy, but more important than that, people who have a heart for you, who love you with all our hearts and love our neighbors, love everybody else as we love ourselves. We believe that your word teaches us the truth about love. Help us to become loving people. Help us to practice listening and learning and liberating and, and e even standing with that person when everything goes wrong. Help us to level with each other in the truth, but help us to always do it out of love, not out of frustration, not out of fear, not out of guilt, not out of pressure. Help us to treat each other, Jesus, the way you treat us. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, you know, you're gonna have to really deepen your friendships and deepen your relationships if you wanna make permanent lifestyle changes in your life. And now we're gonna hear from Steve Willis, who's helped his own congregation get healthy. And through that process, Steve experienced firsthand the power of community and the amazing transforming ability of getting healthy when a group of friends surround you for support. Let's listen to Steve. Thank you so much, Pastor Rick. It's great to hear some words about how friends and community really have the power to heal. It's my privilege and honor to be here with Pastor Steve Willis today. Thank hey, you Dave. for joining us. Thank you. Steve made it all the way out from Huntington, West Virginia, and we specifically wanted him to come out for this um, message on friends and community because he has had an amazing experience, both personally and his family, and some really, um, I just want to say, crazy things that happened within his church and his church family. I know as a result you'll get into the story, but um, it'd be fun for them to hear a little bit about the book that you wrote as a result of your journey. Right. Um, you know, I wrote Winning the Food Fight just kind of to, to tell the story of how our church and the individuals of our church affected the entire community. And really, Huntington, West Virginia at one time was considered the most obese city in America. Wait, say that one more time. The most obese city in America. 46% <laughs> of our adults were obese. Wow. Uh, we led the nation in just about every negative health category you could. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now is that obesity trend, one of the few cities in America, the obesity trend is beginning to reverse. Wow. And you would attribute some of that to, um, I know a lot of different things, but what role did the, the power of friendship or community play as you saw these changes happening within your own church family and community? Well, I would say first it started with me and a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, when you live in an area where most of the people are overweight, out of shape, you know, I, I looked at myself on my kind of a basketball build and was feeling pretty good about myself compared to everybody else. 
And then I saw a friend of mine from graduate school, uh, you know, about five or six years ago. And as soon as I got off the plane, he looked at me and poked me in the belly. Uh oh. And he said, Boy, you're letting yourself go. And, you know, I had increased about five or six inches on my waist side. And, and so I thought, uh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, but then, even soon after I got back home, uh, my, my son was in kindergarten. You know, he didn't finish in the top 50th percentile in schools. He wasn't doing well. Uh, within three to six months of when we changed his diet, changed our diet, he went from 50th percentile to 80th, 90th percentile in school, was an A student in math. I mean, wow. he, he just went from C's to A's almost overnight. You know, if our children aren't being all that God wants them to be, if they're not achieving what they could just because they're not eating the right foods, mm -hmm. then that's a moral issue. It's something I, not only as a father, but as a pastor, had to look at. For What about the other kids in our church? How many kids could be good scientists or lawyers or teachers, mm -hmm. but they're not getting the nutrition they need? Then really the next big marker mm -hmm. that hit me personally in my life is one day I was doing a visit with a really good friend, somebody mm -hmm. who's very involved in our church. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I was there with him when the doctor was doing the pre-surgery because I always go up there to pray with people. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, you know, after this surgery, you're really gonna have to change your lifestyle if you're gonna live very much longer. And, you know, we kind of laughed and joked, hey, no more pizza. And, you know, after the surgery was over, mm -hmm. I went back in the room, he, he was supposed to wake up soon. And something went wrong in post-op and I literally, I watched my friend die right there on the table. Oh my goodness. And <clears throat> that's, Wow. That's when it hit me, this, this is a big deal. You know, people, people are dying over this issue. And I went back to the church that evening, and I, we were having a potluck dinner, and I saw what oh, everybody no. was I bringing. I see it coming, yeah. And all the food, <clears throat> I just looked at it, and nothing, nothing on the table was healthy. And I just thought, what are we doing as the church to contribute to this problem? You know, we're one of, out of two people are obese. So I went to our church leaders and I said, hey, this is something we have to address. This is a moral issue. When people are dying, kids can't learn the way they're supposed to. Hmm. Uh, and they said, you know, we'd rather you didn't because people will be offended. This is such a sensitive issue. You know, this whole thing with food, yeah. nutrition, body image. And I asked them to pray about it for a month. And uh, they came back and they hmm. said, you can do it. But if you're gonna talk about this, do it with a feather, not with a hammer. Mm -hmm. So I came back and, and my wife said, you know, people aren't going to realize what a problem we have around here. And literally the fi Friday before the Sunday I preached the sermon, the Center for Disease Control released a report that said that Huntington, West Virginia, our city, was indeed the fattest, unhealthiest city in that America. That's like crazy. The right. fattest city in America. Right. Yeah, well, it's, it's not one of those things where you want to say we're number one. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not a matter of pride. No matter what your faith background is, we all have food in common. We all have our own health in common. Right. And we need the community to be involved. So we started doing it in our church and then we started involving the community in a lot of activities. We started doing weekly meals uh, mm -hmm. so where people could come and for, for a very inexpensive dinner, but yet a healthy dinner. Mm -hmm. Families could sit down around the dinner table, eat together, get involved in Bible study afterwards if they wanted to, exercise together. And mm -hmm. it literally has revolutionized our city. We've, we've reversed the obesity trend. And sometimes when I think about the Daniel plan, when I think about what you've been doing in your community, I think it is a very grace-filled message. People don't have to feel overwhelmed to do it all or to feel behind or to compare, but it's more about just moving forward, making incremental shifts. Right. You're talking about your, your, your conviction of not only your son, but then a mm -hmm. dear friend passing away. Um, the 15 hours of hospital visits, you know, to say like, gosh, let's do something different about this in a grace-filled way, but let's do it together. What type of changes did you start seeing within your church family? Well, immediately we, immediately we saw a lot of individual change. Mm -hmm. And what was, the biggest blessing to me is when I would see an entire family come down there together. Mm -hmm. uh, we even did a thing like a community garden and the kids starting to eat vegetables. Hmm. And wow, imagine fruit. that. Yeah. We changed our snacks at the church. You know, we quit giving the kids the donuts and hmm. started putting fruit out and they actually liked that nice. over time, their, their taste change. But then when you, when you start seeing people shed the pounds, that's great. The biggest thing I saw though, Dee, is when moms come to me and say, you know what, I've got energy to play with my kids now. I literally had a family come to me and said, this has saved our marriage. Wow. Uh, we've got the energy to spend time together in the evening. 
having grandmas and grandpas come mm. to me and say, we're off our medications now. This is something that we've been able to share God's love with mm. people who would never come to church otherwise. Mm. You know, when we're going into the gyms and getting group memberships. And it's created a culture in which we love each other, not judging each other, but we love each mm -hmm. other, support each other. And when you see somebody getting in better shape, you go and you give them a hug and say, good job, keep up the good work. And it has literally revolutionized our community. So what would your encouragement be, Steve, uh, in a real practical way of how to get connected or to, to make some of these changes that we've been talking about? Yeah, what, one of the best things that I, I've told people to do that I've seen it's really worked mm -hmm. is if you wanna make changes in your life, especially in the area of health and nutrition, hang out with people who get it. You know, if you see someone who mm -hmm. takes care of themselves, go to them and just say, what are you doing? How, how do you eat? What do I need to do? And what I found is whether it's a single person hanging out with someone else who's a single person and, mm -hmm. and just talking about it, going out and eat together and yeah. what choices you make. Or, you know, a dad sometimes won't listen to his wife, okay? But if he sees another man that's taking care of his body and eating properly, if, if these kids, if your kids see these kids over here, eat their, they, they will eat their fruit and vegetables. Yeah. A lot of times that sense of community is mm -hmm. what spurs us on to making the changes that we really need. It really does. You know, one of our founding doctors, Dr. Mark Hyman, says you're more likely to be influenced by the friends you spend time with than by your parents' genetics. And to think that your social network is more important than your genetic makeup is right. absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. And what I found is people who hang out with people who get it, they make changes. Mm -hmm. The people who don't hang out with people who get it, a lot of times they don't. So. Find the power of community, positive change, and uh, you'll see life change from that. Amazing. Uh, I know that you guys have done some amazing things with um, the power of community around the area of cooking and lifestyle changes. Tell our viewers a little bit about that. Yeah, our church was featured on uh, ABC's Jamie Oliver's Food Revolution and won an Emmy. Very cool. Uh, and when Jamie came to town, literally on a Sunday night I prayed, God sent somebody to our town to teach our people how to cook. The next morning, Jamie's producers called and said, we want to come to Huntington, West Virginia. That and is And teach our amazing. people how to cook. And what we did is we trained people, not so it would stop there, we trained others so they could train others. It's this whole idea of pass it on. You may not think you need community, but your community needs you. Nice, your community needs you. Right, so okay. if you get it, Mm -hmm. Get involved in your community at church. Get people involved in this Daniel plan. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're going to start seeing lives change is when the community gets the ball right, rolling in the right direction. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fantastic. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for flying all the way out from Huntington, West Virginia. Oh, it's been my pleasure. For sharing place. your story. So our encouragement to you um, as people is to, to dig in with a few friends, seek some people out. So with that, I pray that you have a great time as you enter into your groups and that um, you can take some initial steps to keep motivated and inspired on this journey towards better health. Thanks so much.